But here at this sad occasion, the home going of our neighbor, friend, and classmate, Tamika Gage. Mom and Daddy, we can only imagine the pain that you must be going through. But please understand that our thoughts and our prayers are with you. And that each and every one of us in this room has been greatly affected by this needless tragedy. And we are all looking for answers. Somehow it would help us if there was only an explanation for this epidemic of such needless violence. I just pray that the God of this new millennium, that we as a community and as a society find the collective courage to stop this madness. Look, Father, I got a confession to make. I was that little to me this wake, and I feel like I'm about to break. She was killed in the game, crossed by the paper say, full of wounds to the chest and head, left up for dead, and the cops ain't got no suspects. Witnesses don't remember. Happened back in December, that was the beginning of my dilemma. I was over that way that day, visiting a friend. Then three niggas approached, visiting a robbery. That's when it begins, they was flexing me. Beating the nigga down under the cloudy sky. That's when I grabbed my desert and just spread my wings and let them fly. And I was standing there with my eyes closed. Look, baby. What I want to do, here's how we're going to do I need you to give me your son. Your neighbor's son. I need you to give me an opportunity to place them in a therapeutic structured instructional environment. And we'll walk through this workbook with them. And we'll look at where they come from being a little baby. Where they This is what I want to ask for you. I want to ask this for you. I want to explain to them how they left their mommy's love and see that puts me in the situation. I don't want to be a girl. I need you to try to see this thing. I see it. We wasn't teenagers no more. I said, I'm going to die. You got a two year old son. Can I tell you what it's going to take? It's going to take me to be sincere. And it's going to take us to find it. I talked to Judge Betty Allen Green, and I said to her, Judge, I got a piece. She said, well, that's great, that's wonderful. But you know, if you can get the churches, the churches, the churches, the churches. Uh, see, that's the buzzword <laughs> for control. Because she and I know looking at one another. Go ahead. Hallelujah. Just call it what it is. Well, why ain't that gonna happen? Because they're not together either. Because <laughs> it's not. Next, it's not push. We have a dialogue now. <laughs> yes. Heaven. Sit. I'm sorry. No, you don't be sorry. <laughs> say it again. Let's say it. Either physically or spiritually. Who is it that are in these courts? But church mamas, grandchildren, mm -hmm. I know, right? and children. Mm -hmm. So that means it didn't work, did it? Well, my question is, with all the authority and the power that God's word has, why is it that the ministry has not become a father to grandmama's offspring? Mm -hmm. See, here's the thing. We can beat up on the average brother about being irresponsible as a father. But if he came and asked you on Monday morning, like Nicodemus did, I, what must I do? Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm in bondage! My children are dying! What must I do to be saved today? What can the preacher say to him to save him today? Wow. Ah. I, I'm not saying plans. I got all of them. But I got a framework. 